This is another random factory component I added in an eBay order, and it's an emergency stop button. It's the type that you uh, push in and it latches, and then to release it you turn it and it clicks back out again. And it's quite nice that I didn't realise before until I was just looking at there that it's got little windows that you can see the normally closed contacts being opened, and on the other side you can see the normally uh, open contacts being closed. Um, so everything comes apart, and as you'd expect, for mounting the panel, the end knob screws off, the sort of collet screws off, this little plate, which isn't perfectly, the text isn't quite 100% aligned correctly, but it's, it's fine. I think people will get the gist. Then it's got this little rubber washer and this uh, adjuster at the back for uh, panel thickness. Um, so, I'll just leave those off in fact. Then the back it's got the contact block, which uh, can be unlocked from it. It's just a catch. And when that comes off, these little shims also pop off. Um, it's got the two modules, it's got the normally closed uh, and the normally open and uh, these just dovetail together, I'm guessing, you know, ultimately it will be based in a standard uh, format and um, you, you can just set, make up stacks of switches to your own requirement. Do these, ah, uh, these will actually latch together as well, won't they? Will they? Yes, they will. You can stack them. So uh, it's fully, it's like a standard industrial stack, in other words, that you can just stack them like that. Um, so um, yes, I'm just about to take this to bits and see how many bits are in it. One moment, please. This switch has 40 separate components. That's really surprising. I didn't think it would be that many. Um, the latching mechanism is quite interesting. If this is the plunger, it presses into this. Now, there's a couple of springs involved here. One is the one that just pushes the button back out again. And the other one is the one for when you rotate it, so it clicks back into the correct position. And this is the rotational spring here, which just pokes through a hole in that and sort of self-retains. It's quite neat. This has two fins on it, and these push past these little things. Let's see if I can find the correct bits they go into. And these are basically little spring-loaded wedges. There's a little spring behind each, and it's almost like a little catch. And when you press the button in, these lips go past these catches and then click and it latches and the only way to release it then is to return it so that these little uh, rims aren't on the the wedges. So I'm um, quite quite interesting indeed. Now I just have to uh, put it back together again. Hmm. wonder how long that'll take. And start the clock. This is not going to go together too easily at all. I've forgotten where half this stuff goes, but that's alright, I'll work out as we go. I'm not sure if, you know, that this, this is the correct sort of uh, attitude to take when you're putting together something that could, someone's life could rely on. I quite like the idea of using this as an emergency stop sort of general switch for the workbench. So this goes in here. This is quite nice, it's very chunky and robust, it's got uh, some alignment fins in this that uh, lock quite securely with it, and then it's got little latches. So that's, uh, that's just latched. And then these little wedges go down to hold that in place. Where are they? Where are they? Make sure I get the right bits here. Uh, but they also act as a sort of like an end travel sort of stop. Is it like that? I think it's like that. I shouldn't be making guesses though. Oh no, it probably goes down like this. Yeah, it does go down like that. Then there's another one on the other side. Yeah, it really is worth getting one of these just as a puzzle. It's quite, uh, it's quite amusing. Boring if you're not doing the puzzle right enough. So that would go in like that. Yep. There's the little wedges. These wedges are so neat, the, the way they work. Uh, it's the bit that latches the button, and it really is just little spring-loaded catches with a that slide in a housing with a tiny little spring at the back. I think I'm going to have to poke that spring in with a screwdriver. Oh, nope, mashing things up here. There we go. Here's the other one. And the other dingy little spring, which I've, I've just lost. There it is. 
I suppose ultimately many of the other switches that are from the same range are based on the similar sort of mechanisms. This one will be a wee bit more sophisticated because it's got this rotating mechanism. So um, yes, that's, there's that little uh, locking ring goes in the back, then goes that. Then goes the emergency stop indicator plate. The collet. Then the button itself. It's quite neat the way this works. The back plate here has that little sort of lip on either side and there are these two little spring-loaded catches that just spring in like that. And when you push it up, the lip on the plate pushes past those catches and it clicks past them and it's very decisive. And the only way to then get it undone is to rotate it so that those plates aren't sitting on those catches anymore. And then it just clicks back out again. It's quite neat. Uh, these things are, I think they're just actually sort of packers to hold that in. I don't know why they're sort of loose, I guess, ultimately, but they're just going to assemble it with the switches and everything on the back. This is a bit that would immediately fall on the floor in the factory when you were trying to fix it. And that just leaves the contact blocks to put together. So, the contact block, this uh, pushes down, this is the normally opens, this is a spring that goes in here. Oh, this is very fishy. And the contact will go in with the contacts pointing down the way and lock against the spring. So that's now when um, it's pushed. Oh, that's actually wrong, isn't it? Yes, I should put those the other way around. That's better. This is so that when it's pushed down um, and it makes contact with the things it's making contact with, the other contacts, uh, then it can level off across them. And then as you continue to push it down, it just springs up. It won't actually stop this button going down further. And likewise, the red one will uh, have the arrangement in the opposite direction. So it's got its wee spring goes in. I could get a job in the factory. I'm not sure I'd really want a job in the factory making these. In this case, uh, it's being pushed down, so it's going to push the contacts away. Oh, OK. This arrangement has the contacts at the top. They just press in. Quite reassuringly, I have to say, it's quite nice sensation when they press in. That was completely wrong. No, it wasn't actually completely wrong. That was completely right. I wonder if the contacts are different. Yes, they are. It's a different metal forming for that. Uh, and I'll just, uh, once you put these screws in, the terminal screws, it holds them in place. Once I get it in the right thread, there we go. How's the how's the clock doing? Am I managing it in record time? Probably not really. I'd probably been sacked from the factory by now. So uh, this is the stop one. So that spring goes there. So that when you press it down, it uh, breaks the contact, but uh, when it goes up, returns under its own spring pressure, it's uh, still got the extra spring in the contact so it can fully return and level them off. So that should uh, be that bit done. If I hook this over there and latch it, that's that. OK, that's that assembly done. These contacts will go in the opposite direction because the button's being pressed down Oh, is that right? Yes, it is. This goes up this way. The button's being pressed down to press across, across those contacts. Yeah, I have to say it's quite enjoyable assembling this. OK, after you'd done your 10,000th at the factory, it probably wouldn't be enjoyable. I wonder how much of it's done manually and how much of it's uh, machined. I'm not sure. And given that it comes from China, it probably is manual. And then goes that terminal screw. This uh, return spring goes down the little spigot that catches it in place, and uh, then this end sits down in that. If I can get it to go in, there it goes. No, it didn't. 
sacked again. Maybe I'll try putting it in that bit first. Okay, so now uh, that's that contact assembly done. As you see, the, it can travel down until the contacts make, but they can travel down a wee bit further after that. And then on goes this little clip. Uh, have I pinged that off? No, I haven't. It's still... It's quite footry, this bit. I could see the factory having lots of springs flying about everywhere. Then these two go together like this. They sort of dovetail together. And then the whole assembly just clicks over the back like this. And that's it. Job done. Yeah, that was quite interesting. Definitely worth getting just as a puzzle. That's quite nice. Also, I do like the idea of using this as a uh, power for the workbench. Yeah, that's quite neat.